Python on hardware. Okay, mm. this week in the Adafruit newsletter from adafruitdaily.com. This is a good newsletter. Went I out, like this one. Out one day later because we had a uh, issue with uh, sending stuff out, but it, out. it yeah. came out. Um, I'll get to the, the story mm-hmm. I was going to ask you about, but we went over, if you haven't seen our shows last week or um, some of the things that we've been writing about, Adafruit Penguin, um, you can use any font in EagleCAD. That's Yay. exciting, and we uh, definitely um, abused uh, Papyrus quite a bit. Uh, and people see, as, as <laughs> I'm doing a lot of board reorders right now, as new boards come in, you're going to see some of the nice silk screens filter in. Um, yeah. You know, you, you might get ones with the older versus newer silk screen as I, as I make them all pretty using uh, Penguin. Yeah. It's made it so fast, I do it instantly and then order the boards. Great. And then uh, this is interesting because we just had our show and tell not too long ago. Um, you know. Tandy, Tandy. And a lot of folks are taking some of the, the retro hardware, but now they're updating it with new things. So this is a Tandy TRS 80 model. We have one, uh, model 100. This is a retrofit. <clears throat> So it uses Raspberry Pi hardware, uses uh, Pico running CircuitPython, and while the machine itself is faster, um, they kept the same display too. So this is very yeah. neat. Um, Look at the first part was the keyboard, and then yeah. the next thing they're going to do is maybe put in like a Raspberry Pi with like a bar display. Yeah, maybe a color display. A um, couple interesting things: program environment for mm. MicroPython called Guana. You can check that out. Um, Badger, if you want to hack your ID badges, play games. This is a cool um, badge from the folks at Pi Maroney. Um, you can use MicroPython with that. And then um, the CircuitPython IDE, I don't know if you all have seen this, um, but there's an online IDE for it. Uh, a couple new features, uh, <clears throat> file modification indicator, and the other is a serial mode, mode indicator. So you could check that out. Um, yes, and this is uh, River Wangs, and we also yeah. have our own as well. So, so there's, cool. So here it is. And yeah, this is like real and live, and like, you know, you can connect your board. Yeah. Um, and I just went, you know, straight here from the newsletter. What a wonderful time to be doing Chrome electronics. Is All right. Um, you can check out some of the shows that we have. We just talked about uh, Paul, uh, who is on the show and tell, mm-hmm. who has yeah. Bootloader. In addition to other shows, I think this week is um, Brayden. Brayden and Brayden showed some projects last week on the show and tell. Yeah. Uh, and then don't forget September 29th, which is coming up tomorrow, the CircuitPython Community Help Desk. Oh, here's a bootloader project. Oh, oh yeah, is that's it cool. in there? Oh, that's a nice logo. Good okay, Todd and Paul. Yeah, and this was one of Brayden projects here. So uh, the thing I wanted to give you a couple of minutes of airtime, Lady Ada, is I saw this running around and everyone's like, you know, nothing. Well, this is a, a nothing. A, a nothing. A joke. Di- yeah, nothing yeah. divides people up like programming languages or bring people together. So um, mainline Python 3.14 predicted to be faster than C++. Really? Okay. What's this all about? It's a, a little bit of a joke. So basically, you know, as of Python, th- the, the biggest deal with Python was just trying to get everyone onto three. Um, which took a while, and I think you know what you can see is by the time we got to like three six three seven, um, you know a lot of people moved over to three, and so you know, one of the things that seems like the the Python Foundation wanted to focus their time on because there's so much stuff built in, and like, there were a couple additional like the Walrus operators, and and um, you know I think async also got a little bit more support um, in recent versions, but it looks like what they've really been working on um, for the last couple of versions, starting with. 310 and 311 is um, in, in improving by decreasing the amount of time it takes to execute Python scripts. So interpreted languages are great because um, they have memory management and garbage collection and um, you know they're often dynamically typed and I, I just love interpreted languages. You don't have to languages. compile them and sit you don't there. have to compile stuff. Trade-off is of course uh, you know things can fail halfway through the program because they were, they're not all, it's not all compiled at once. Um, but second thing is usually they're a lot slower because they're run through a virtual machine. But it looks like one of the things they've really been working on is uh, really in, improving the, the quality, the quality, the speed of the Python runtime. Um, looks like, you know, there's a, a example loop that they use and the loop time is usually 10 milliseconds or 10 seconds for this example loop and they got it down to, uh, sorry, 11 seconds and it got down to like about six. So it's about a, you know two times increase in speed, which is which is great because um, if the only trade-off between interpreted languages and compiled languages is the running time, then, you know, 
if you can just increase the, improve the running time, then maybe more people will use Python for um, live applications, not just for speed of programming, but also speed of, of running. And so there's this joke of, like it's, it uses like the XKCD graph generator where it's like if you extrapolate, you know, like yesterday you weren't married, today you are married, which means in three days you will have like, you know, seven husbands. Um, if the loop time has, has gone down this much so far, you know, basically within a year, we will have negative loop time. Yeah. Not really. But it'll get closer. I mean, like, I, I think we could probably squeeze another uh, two times um, speed improvement yeah. now, now and, that they're looking at it. And, you know, th one of the great things now is everyone can try something out for free, essentially. Like, there's some way to try something out for free. So my suggestion is, um, you know, stay away from the arguments online, like, eh, make sure you cut your teeth and you should write things in assembly. Remember? Don't listen to any of those folks. In fact, run away from them. Um, try something out. And one of the things that's kind of nice now is uh, with microcontrollers and being able to do Python with microcontrollers, you can learn a skill that can work on desktop you know, data sciences. You can, any of the machine learning stuff, any of the AI stuff, like uh, there, there's tons of things. <laughs> and then the Raspberry Pi with Blinka, like one learning, learning a programming language to start and then being able to do a lot of stuff with it and then figuring out where you want to do like you know, literally deep dives, you have a show, deep dive, yeah. um, is, is really powerful. And the microcontrollers are fast enough now where there really isn't like, like what are you doing with these things where, a, you know, a millisecond's gonna matter for, for a lot of these things. Yeah, and one of the things that we've always prioritized in CircuitPython, I mean, this is Python, which is of course a different core than uh, CircuitPython, but one of the things that, you know, we've always prioritized is ease of use over runtime speed, because you can always, improve the runtime speed fast, you know, later, but getting the usability is important to get done first because it's one of those things that if you don't bake in the usability and the ease of use to start, it's really hard to add that later. I found that things don't get easier to use with time. They'll get faster, Yeah. but usually it's like whatever system you have set up to program the boards in, that's why like using mass storage was really important to us, using Wi-Fi workflow. Yeah, I feel like the biggest barrier right now is just getting people started and having some success with what they're trying to do. Yeah. That seems to be the thing that's mm. taking the longest is like a total abandonment and not wanting to do it. And then like, hey, no, really, there's other ways to do things. So anyways. Yeah, it's cool stuff. Yeah. It's, so the, the graph is a joke, but the performance improvement is real. Yeah. And that's Python on Horror. Thank you, Blinka. And we deliver this every single week to your inbox. Usually Tuesdays, sometimes Wednesdays. And um, speaking of Adafruit Daily, so uh, the Adafruit IoT newsletter monthly is coming out. You can go to adafruitdaily.com and sign up for that. And then we also have our new product newsletter. That That's the only one you can get through our website if you want to. You can go to adafruit.com slash newsletter. But we also do it as a standalone newsletter on Adafruit Daily, too, so you don't even need to use our store site. So do check those out. I strongly recommend the IoT newsletter, especially since so much stuff is happening with There's the Snapper. It's like non, it's nonstop. So if you're interested in the rapid development that's occurring on Whippersnapper and Adafruit IO, and of course, you know, general IoT news yeah. around the industry, um, do subscribe. Yeah, and uh, you know, just because you all know us. So even mm. though it's our newsletter, we put everything in there. It doesn't matter which company is making an IoT thing. We're just picking the best stuff. Oh yeah, um, you, people can send no in stuff too. There's no affiliate too. links, there's no ads. Um, there's no uh, Amazon affiliate links, there's nothing like that. We just cover the stuff that, that we like and uh, we want to show and share. And I think that's why people like these newsletters because they never feel like they're getting tricked or they're getting sold something. It is really like, here's cool stuff that uh, we like and we're up to and things that other people make. Um, I kind of wish more newsletters were like this.